All righty, good morning everybody. Welcome back to Smoking Bo's Barbecue. I'm Bo Briscoe, your host, and let's go ahead and get started today. Today we have a wonderful, beautiful, giant, fatty, eight and a half, actually almost nine pound pork loin uh, that we got from Costco. This is a really awesome, cheap cut of meat that you guys can do. You don't have to go out and buy a hundred dollar brisket or eighty dollars worth of pork shoulder or anything like that. Um, we're going to do this in two different ways today. They're both going to be smoked. They're both going to be delicious. However, I am going to do one with just a plain dry rub. And then the other one, we're going to do a really awesome mango habanero slather with our normal rub. So let's go ahead and get started. I got to make up a little bit more pork rub because uh, I've been using quite a bit of it here lately. So let's go ahead and get started with that. I went ahead and laid it back out so you guys can see the recipe for what I use for pork again. So I've got my awesome little shaker bottle that I normally use. And yes, you can buy these shaker bottles from Amazon. I actually bought a two pack for like, I don't know, $10 or something like that. I don't even think it was that much. It was probably like $7. And I keep two of them because one of them, of course, is the brisket rub that is just salt and pepper. So, all right, so for the pork one, again, the recipe is two parts kosher salt, two parts coarse ground black pepper, one part granulated garlic, and then a half part of chipotle chili powder. Now you can use uh, any kind of chili powder. Most people like to use paprika for a coloring. However, we like a little bit of heat with our barbecue, so I use the chipotle chili powder. So got my nice little funnel that I made out of butcher paper and some tape. And it's pretty simple. If any of you have ever made a rub before or any kind of homemade seasonings, this is kind of the best way to do it. Oh, try not to breathe the garlic or the chili powder in. That hurts a little bit. Dump those in the sink. And shake it up. Shake it up. All right, that's ready to rock and roll. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. We're gonna make our slather for half of the pork loin. Um, once again, like I said, we're gonna do half of it dry, half of it with a mango habanero slather. So, first thing that we're gonna need, a mango. Second things we're gonna need, habanero peppers. Now habanero peppers are a little bit hot. They're not the hottest thing in the world, but they are pretty uncomfortable to touch if you get them on your face. And then, God forbid, you end up going to the bathroom and you end up lighting your pecker on fire. So don't do that. So. We are going to get these cut up and I'm going to put them in the old food processor here and we're gonna make a nice little slather. So the mango, we're just gonna cut it straight in half. Now there is a pit in the middle of this. We're just gonna roll around that. Kind of like an avocado if you've never dealt with one of those or if you have dealt with one of those. And we're just gonna tear it in half. We're gonna take our mango here and plop that into the food processor. And then get me a rag here and kind of clean up our mess just so we have a little clean surface to work with the peppers. Now you probably saw in either a little time lapse or however Alan decided to edit this out that mango was super, super soft and extra ripe. You actually probably maybe saw a little bad spot in it I had to cut out. That's no big deal. Ripe fruit is just ripe fruit. Um, I ended up not cutting it like you would normally do a mango where I was going to cut it in half and then score the inside of it and take the chunks out. With that one being so ripe and so soft, I was actually unable to do that. So I ended up just peeling the outside of it away and then just scooping and using my chef's knife and scraping off uh, all of the, uh, the meat from the pit of it and from the shell of it and then yeah, worked out pretty fine. So sometimes just really soft fruits, just hard to handle. So let's get down to our peppers. 
So we're just gonna cut these little guys. We're just gonna cut the ends off. And then I am going to peel, I'll just cut them in half again. I'm gonna peel all the seeds out of this because yes, that is where most of the heat's gonna come from is on the seeds. And we might keep a few in on some of these peppers, but for the most part, we are going to cut the seeds out. Some of these peppers are a little bit older, but they will work out just fine. I want that nice sweet heat that habaneros give you from the flesh of the pepper and not from the actual seeds. There's still a couple left in there. We'll keep those just for a little bit extra heat. They'll, they'll smoke out just fine. Good, good, good. I can actually already smell the inside of these things and it's making my eyes water a little bit, which tells me that these are good peppers. It's gonna taste good, it's gonna smell good. They're just, it's gonna be great. It's gonna be freaking awesome. Again, I'm just peeling out a little bit of these veins, a little bit of these seeds, most of the seeds. There's still a few in there we'll keep in. Right. Clean up our mess here. Get all these seeds off before I accidentally touch one without gloves and then decide to rub my eyes or something like that. It's gonna be awesome, right? Okay, so. Food processor we go. this bad mamma jam here and scrape some of this back down. Oh man, that is very sweet and strong smelling. Just getting that knocked back down. Basically, trying to talk while this thing's going. Basically, you want to puree this. that's about as good of a consistency as we're gonna get. So, scrape all this off the lid, and into the sink you go. And that is just going to sit until we're ready for our pork. So, alrighty, okay, so we got our pork loin unwrapped. Nice and beautiful right here. One side of it is a little thinner than the other side, which is fine. Uh, I'm probably gonna use this thicker side here for just the rub. The thinner side here, since it's gonna have the mango habanero slather on it, uh, it's gonna probably block a little bit of smoke flavor. It's gonna block a little bit of the heat going through it. So we'll use the smaller side for that. So let's go ahead and get this uh, bad mamma jamma cut in half roughly right here. There we go. And this is how we're gonna go ahead and do it. So again, this side here is going to be just pork rub. So we'll lay that on there nice and thick. I don't know why my shaker is being a little bit of an asshole right now. Hang on. There we go. Turn that over. A little more rub. Rub a dub dub. All right, and get our sides on the excess there. Don't ever forget to season the sides of your meat. And of course this exposed end here, he needs a little bit. All right, and that one's good to go. I'm gonna grab a pan out of down here and we're gonna end up cooking these fat side up. Okay, so that's the fat side. So you'll sit right here. I'm just gonna set that right here out the way. And then we get ready to slather this bad mamma jam up. So got our mango habanero 
rub, or excuse me, slather. And I'm going to actually, just for funsies, I'm going to score this up just a little bit just so I can get as much of that in there as possible. Now I have only done something like this one time before. So those of you watching, if you guys have done mango habanero, different kinds of fruit slathers on pork, um, go ahead, tell me what I'm doing wrong in the comments below. I appreciate it. But uh, if you think that this is a good idea or if you've tried something similar to this and maybe done it different and gotten a better result than we're gonna come out with, by all means, tell me. I'm all about learning something new. And that's why I wanted to do this today because this is something new for me. All right. So now that we got that on there, let's go ahead and get our rub. Now I'm gonna go a little bit lighter with the rub this, on this one. Just a little bit lighter, not a, not a whole hell of a lot. Flop this guy over. Again, this may turn out to be a total flop. I don't know. We're all going to find out together. Get a little rub on them sides. I got plenty of excess there on the end. Perfect. Yeah. Slap, slop up some of this on the cutting board and onto the pan you go. All right, so see you guys when we get the smoker up and running and uh, stay tuned. All right, welcome back. So we've got our pork loin out here. Uh, I am going to do a little bit extra today. Um, our old pork lard that we got back when we did the rib video. I've been meaning to smoke it up. I haven't done a pork smoke that I had room on the smoker for. Don't think I'm going to be using any of this today. Uh, I'm going to save this for some shoulders or some more ribs later on. I just want to get it smoking with this so that I can put it back in the canister later and use it for later cooks. Uh, similar just like we did with the, uh, the beef tallow back in the day uh, when we did the first brisket. Uh, this is the same old pan that we actually used for the brisket, the, for the beef tallow, excuse me. I uh, just rot washed it and reused it. So let's go ahead and get these bad boys onto the smoker and be nice and gentle with it. I don't want to scratch off any of the rub that's on them. And I'm going to put the point ends, the ends that I didn't cut towards the fire. Um, the whole reason for this is just because the open exposed meat end back here, I would rather not get burned up. Plus it's pretty far away and I'm going to have that pork lard in the, uh, in between them. And of course, these are fat side up. There we go. Scrape up a little bit of this uh, extra bit, a little bit of this juice that came off of there with the rub and mango in it. And then we'll get this bad boy onto the smoker with it. And I'm going to keep these at about 275 for the next three hours. Probably keep it at 275 for the entire cook. And uh, in three hours, we'll start spritzing with our beer and uh, apple cider vinegar. And looking at probably doing about six hours with these. Temperature is gonna really tell. I don't wanna get them over tender because uh, I'm not trying to make pulled pork out of this. I'm trying to cut it up into nice little slices so that we can have for dinner tonight. So see you guys in about three hours or so. Alrighty guys, so we are now at our three hour mark, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got going on. Oh, a little steamy, a little steamy. Alright, so the one that we just have the rub on, the fat cap's already started to split. 
Looking good there. So we got a nice little bark. I might add a little bit more rub on that just just because the fat cap split and pulled a lot of the rub away. And then the mango habanero one we've got here. We've got a nice beautiful crust on it. A little bit of rendered fat starting to kind of pour out of the end of it there. Of course our smoked pork lard that's starting to get a nice little bit of color to it and the water pan's doing good over there. So we're gonna go ahead and just start uh, and get a little there we go. Get a little test spritz and nice and gentle don't want to knock anything off get those little ends there all right i'm gonna go ahead and close this real quick and i am gonna go ahead and real quick and grab a little bit of that rub and just kind of put on that bald spot where the bark pulled away where the where the fat cat split just throw a little bit more of that rub on there and uh now we are just going to do this every 30 minutes now until they're done i'm looking for an internal temperature of about 100 and 65 170 again like i said i don't want them to get too tender i want them to actually be able to cut up into little pork chops i don't want to don't want to shred them like pulled pork so all right i'm gonna keep spraying these every 30 minutes and uh we'll see you guys uh, around the time that's yeah, around supper time bye all right welcome back so now we are at the five hour mark and we're done cooking actually um got a nice beautiful bark on it i just took a look at it we're gonna check temps real quick and then we're probably gonna go ahead and wrap them so let's see what we got all right so back here you can see we have a nice beautiful bark even where i had to add a little bit more rub on the plain jane pork loin and then up here you can see where all the sugars that came out of the mango kind of created a little bit of a bubbly glaze on top of it. So that's going to be kind of awesome. Uh, going to go ahead and check temps on there so you guys can see kind of where we're at. Should probably be around 180-ish, maybe 190. Break out the old trusty thermopan. There we go. All right, so on the side that's as farthest away, it's at 182. Check the other one. 183. Okay. And then just for funsies, the end towards the fire, probably a little higher, 186, 187, and 190. All right, we're good enough. We're good enough to wrap on these. That is for show. We've got plenty of smoke flavor. Uh, they are actually done cooking. However, we don't have dinner. You know, it's, it's only uh, it's still a little early in the afternoon. Hello, tinfoil going away. Still a little early in the afternoon. So these are going to rest wrapped up in the oven until dinner time, which is just a couple hours from now. So it's not big, not a big deal. It's only gonna rest for just a couple hours. Uh, let's go ahead and get them wrapped up. So let me get the uh, the mango one here first. Oh, got a little pork left over on the grill. Gonna... Nice and simple, nothing too crazy. No fancy wrap job or anything. It's just going into the oven for a couple hours. Not even at any cooking temperature, just a holding temperature. And they are a little bit tough right now, but resting for a couple hours should tenderize them up just a little bit. And I don't have a marker here. So what I'm gonna do is the one that has the mango, boop, we're gonna put just a little tiny hole in the top of it. That hole's not gonna bother anything. It's not gonna let anything escape. It'll be just fine. And I was just gonna mark which one's the mango habanero in case they change the way they look or decide to swap places in the oven. You know these tricky pork loins, they like to do things to you sometimes. And those are going to go into the oven and rest for a couple hours. We're going to make up the rest of dinner here in a little bit. We'll see you guys at dinner time. All right, guys, welcome back. It is dinner time. So we're going to go ahead and cut these up, see what kind of product we got. Like I said before, I haven't really done something like this. So eh, kind of experiment, Let's see how it goes. I've got the one that's uh, the non mango habanero one, just the one that's got the regular dry rub on it. And uh, we're going to unwrap it and, uh, and get started.
We gave these about an hour and a half, actually eh, close to two hours on a rest. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that smells amazing. That smells great. So we are just going to go right dead in the, yeah, we'll go a little bit off to the side. Oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful. Good smoke ring. About, almost about a half an inch through there. So that is going to taste nice and smoky. Let me go ahead and get just a little slice off of this. So we're gonna try it real quick. A little end piece. Mm, yep. A little end piece is really good. So let's try some of the actual meat in it. Mm. That is one super smoky pork loin. Super smoky pork loin. Okay, let's check out what this mango habanero one tastes like. It's super good. Oh, wow. Just a smoked little pork chop with a great rub on it. I'm very anxious about this one because we had a couple little tiny taste bites uh, from what some of that meat that was stuck on the, on the grate. And oh my, it was good. And man, does that look good. Ooh. Let's go ahead and get this guy off. And we're gonna start a little bit closer to the end here. That looks great. Let me get a little corner here. And this has the mango and, hab mango and habanero, fresh mango and habanero puree that I made earlier. So we'll give this little guy a try. Mm. Instantly notice a difference. Just the taste of that mango, the sweetness of the mango hits instantly. Now the heat's starting to come in from the habanero, but not a lot. A lot of the smoky and the uh, the smoke and the heat kind of neutralizes a whole lot of that, and you just get kind of the sweetness from the habanero with just a little tiny kick. Thank you guys for watching. That tastes amazing. I cannot wait to sit down and actually just have a full meal, Alan and I, with this. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you like what you see, go ahead and try this out. Let me know how it works out for you. If you change something up, if you use different types of fruits and whatnot, I'd love to hear it in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Remember to like and subscribe to the video and have a good time.